Hi, I'm Pat Patterson, a developer evangelist at Force.com, and this is a short video to illustrate my recent blog entry on calling the Force.com REST API from JavaScript in Visual Force pages. Now, I wrote a small toolkit to allow uh, JavaScript to call into the uh, REST API and get around JavaScript's uh, same origin policy. Before this, I wrote this toolkit, there was no way to uh, call that REST API from, from JavaScript running in the browser. So uh, let's take a look at the sample. Now I'll go and log in and this is um, pretty much a standard uh, Visual Force application. It's not a portal or a site or anything. I just have to log in as a uh, Salesforce user and demonstrate my inability to type and talk at the same time. And you'll see that it's a pretty basic account browser. Um, it's not going to win any prizes for graphic design, but it shows the basics of the REST API and uh, the toolkit. Now, um, first of all, what the application does is run a describe to get the metadata for accounts. So these are all the string fields for accounts in my developer edition. So I can maybe filter on Billing City, and it's going to run a query where Billing City starts with San, and you'll see that I have Ajaxy effects. If I type um, and then uh, briefly stop typing, um, it'll rerun the query and uh, and filter the data there. I can uh, drill into the data here. I might want to uh, take a look at Burlington Textiles, and I'm popping up this dialog uh, with jQuery dialog. So this is all running uh, in the browser here. I can create a new account. So let's have an account for force.com uh, running in the cloud, obviously. And uh, we created a, a database uh, record there. The object ID popped up momentarily, and there it is in the list. Now we can go in, we can modify it. Maybe we get a really nice ticker symbol, and uh, that gets updated. And well, maybe uh, maybe force.com. We do, we don't want that uh, account in our list anymore, and we can close the loop here by deleting it. Now. If you've been working with Apex and Visual Force, um, you might be somewhat underwhelmed here. You know, I you can write these applications uh, all day. There's nothing, um, there's nothing exciting per se. What is interesting here is that it's all taking place in the browser. I don't have a page controller at all in my in my Visual Force page. All I'm doing is um, pulling in some scripts and a style sheet. And the only real bit of uh, Visual Force, the only reason this isn't just static HTML, is that I'm using the uh, session ID there. Oh, a little bit of corruption in uh, in the Chrome interface there. Um, and uh, initializing this client object. Now, what this lets me do is manipulate uh, the database from JavaScript. So here I am doing the describe on the account uh, object and um, the results of that will be passed into metadata callback. So if I go down, this response is passed in, and I get to render it into HTML. This is where I render it into um, that drop-down list, and I get to do other things like, um, well, populate the whole uh, the DOM for the whole uh, application here, filter on the accounts. Um, if I go down a little bit more, I can find some more interesting code. Here's where I delete an account based on the ID that's a hidden field in that dialog and uh, there's some code down here to pull the fields from the uh, the form in the dialog and again based on this ID uh, field we update the account passing in that list of fields. So uh, interesting uh, architecturally we're completely doing this in JavaScript um, but where the real uh, the real value comes is not so much in uh, regular browser applications, but um, in the mobile space. So here I have uh, the trusty iPhone simulator, and I'm going to go to uh, my accounts application. Now here I have essentially um, whoops, rewritten the application. 
I just can't multitask. I've rewritten the application for, with uh, jQuery Mobile. And this gives us a very nice uh, mobile interface that will run on um, iPhone, Android, Blackberry, just about anywhere. And uh, it's the same application. I've done my uh, query to populate this list. Um, I'm not doing filtering in, in here. It's, uh, it would really just be more of the same. But what I can do is create a new account, um, maybe one for uh, Bob, my current user. And uh, he works in IT, and he has a, quite a cool ticker symbol there. And again, this uh, creates it in the database uh, directly from code running on the device. And uh, we have the same kind of semantics here. We can update Bob. Maybe he gets that single character ticker symbol that he's been looking for. And, uh, and then maybe he's just uh, he's been uh, a bit too cocky there and he goes out of business. So we'll, uh, we'll delete him. So uh, there you have it. All of that code was running uh, in the browser application. Essentially, no server-side component whatsoever. And again, it's a, it's a browser app. So uh, you can write it once and deliver it to um, iPhone, Android, Blackberry, uh, since it's uh, written in standard HTML5 uh, cascading style sheets and JavaScript. Okay, thank you for watching.